origin and insertions of the hamstring. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in today's video we're going to explore the hamstring group and we're going to understand the attachment points for the hamstring group and all three muscles that are part of it. I'm also going to share with you some really easy ways of remembering these key facts. Now before we get started, just to let you know there are three mock questions to help you test your knowledge on today's content. All you need to do is click the link that is next to this video and it will take you straight to the blog where you can find the mock questions at the bottom. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you go and do that. That's clicking the red button because that will mean that you get notified of any other videos that we do just like this, which means you can stay up to date. So let's go and explore the hamstrings. Now, first of all, this is not one muscle, it's a group of muscles. There are three muscles that make up the hamstrings and you may already know, but they are on the back of the leg. So we call this posterior. So they're posterior to the leg. Um, and as you look at somebody from the back, you'll notice that these cover what we call the thigh, which is below the bum down towards the knees. So it's in that portion. Um, and when we explore the origin insertion point of the hamstrings, you'll understand them more. But as you're looking at somebody from the back, we're going to see these three stripy muscles that go down the back of the leg. And that's the hamstring group, all three of them. Now, to decipher between them, we need to know the name of those. And we also need to know which one is which location. So this will help you understand them. The first one is the biceps femoris. And if you think about that terminology, it says biceps. It implies like our biceps in our arm is going to bend the leg, just like our bicep bends the elbow. Um, so the biceps femoris is the chunkier one, but it's also on the lateral sides, which is the outer side. So as you're looking at the legs, it's the one that appears on the outer side of the body. Then we have the semitendinosus, which happens, which occurs in the middle. So that's down the middle of the three that you can see. And then the semimembranosus is on the medial side. And that's a good way of remembering it. Membranosus has got an M in it. It's on the medial side. And the medial side is the inside edge, closest to the midline of the body. So we've got semimembranosus on the inside, semitendinosus in the middle, and then bicep femoris on the outside. That makes up the whole muscle group that we need to know about for the hamstrings. Now, important information about all of these hamstrings is that they all originate in the same place and they all cross two joints. They cross the hip and they also cross the knee. Now, that means that they can be responsible for joint actions at both of these. So we need to know what those joint actions are. The first is that it will do hip extension. So as the muscle shortens, it will extend the hip, which is basically going from seated to then standing. That's a hip extension. So that motion whereby you're opening out the hip, you're extending the hip. And it'll also do knee flexion. And this is whereby if you've got a straight leg and you bend your leg, so your heel comes back towards your bum, that is knee flexion. So we've got hip extension and knee flexion. Both happen as a result of the hamstring muscle contracting. And we're going to discuss more about that when we understand more about those origin and insertion points. But just knowing that it's crossing both joints, knowing that it's on the back of the leg and understanding about these three muscles that make up the hamstring group are already going a long way to helping you understand all the information you need to know about hamstrings ready for your level two or level three anatomy exam. So even if you stop at that bit of information, you will have plenty of knowledge. But now let's layer on and understand the terminology for those origins and insertions. So the first thing you need to know is that the origin point is the same for all three muscles. They all originate on the ischium. So that ischial tuberosity is basically the, your sits bones. It's the bit you're sitting on. If you're sitting down, it's the bony bit that you sit on. And as you look at a skeleton picture, it's going to be the knobbly bits at the base of the pelvis. And it's like a ring shape. That ischium tuberosity is the point whereby all three hamstrings originate. So they start there and then that allows them to cross the hip. They then cross the knee and then they insert just below the knee. But the point at which that they insert is different for all of them. So first of all, the bicep femoris starts with an F, so you've got bicep femoris, and that will insert onto the fibula. Whereas the two that we have, the bicep, uh, sorry, the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus, these are like twins, and T starts with the tibia, so these insert down on the tibia. And you've got a nice easy way of remembering that now. So the bicep femoris will attach onto the fibula, and the semimembranosus and semitendinosus will attach onto the tibia. 
Both of these are just below the knee, which means that that allows for that joint action to happen at the knee. So we now have the origin being the ischium or the ischial tuberosity, and then the insertion point being either the fibula or the tibia. And now you have clear understanding of exactly where they are and what the origin and insertion is, as well as a nice handy way of remembering those differences. So now we understand about exactly where that muscle is. Let's understand the exercises that we can do with the hamstrings. So we're talking about as the muscle contracts, as it shortens, as it concentrically collapses, basically, and the origin and the insertion get closer together. So let's analyze that with a squat, for example. In a squat position, if we start down at the bottom part of a squat where we're uh, sort of all flexed up in the smallest sort of ball shape and we stand up, we actually get hip extension. So it's gonna be the top part of the hamstring, the hamstring that crosses the hip, that is gonna contract in order to allow for that to happen. So we're getting contraction, which will extend the hip. Same happens with a kettlebell swing, whereby in a kettlebell swing, you're extending the hip in the concentric phase. That's all happening using hamstrings as one of the muscles that help with that. Often hip extension is also associated with gluteus maximus as well. So both of those work together to form that hip extension. You'll see the same in lunges, you'll see the same in leg press as well. But when you look at knee flexion in the concentric phase, the best exercise for that is gonna be some sort of leg curl. That could be on a machine, it could be using a stability ball, using a TRX or suspension kit, but it's gonna be that curling effect whereby in the concentric phase, the muscle is getting shorter as we flex the knee. And that's gonna be using things like the leg curl. So you've kind of got two different ways of working the hamstrings. One by focusing more on the hip extension and one by focusing more on the knee uh, flexing. So you've got these two different uh, joint actions that happen, both are working the hamstring. So that's really important to understand. And all of this knowledge is gonna help you understand the exercise choice that you use as a fit pro. And often people think that the muscles knowledge that they need to know for the level two and level three anatomy exam just gets lost after the exam and that you don't need it any longer. But this shows, doesn't it, that by understanding the origin and the insertion, understanding the joint actions that are created from the muscles, we actually understand whether that exercise is effective at working the area we want to on those muscles. So now you understand how it links to your use as a fit pro. Now, also what is important is to help you remember all of this information ready for your exam. So if you're working towards your level two exam, there are actually 37 muscles you need to know the origin and insertion of. Whereas for level three, there's 50 muscles that you need to know the origin and insertion, the location of. So as part of that, we've decided to make it really handy for you and we can you can now access our level two and level three muscle memory flashcards. All you need to do to find out more about these flashcards is by clicking the link that is alongside this video and they're really gonna help you visualize, understand and learn those origins and insertions and key facts about all of the muscles you need to know ready for your exam. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'd love to know what your takeaway is and what you've learned. So please do drop a little comment below. And like I said earlier, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, click the red button and you can join us there. Have a wonderful day ahead. Take care.